Okay, um, so we're talking tonight about uh, object relational mapping. This is part three um, out of the second half of chapter 18. And um, tonight uh, you will um, just have time during, uh, once lecture is over for the rest of class, you'll just have time to work on your grade assignment, um, which is due uh, at the end of the night on the 13th. So um, you're gonna have everything you need as of tonight to complete it. I do not have an intro video still. I, my life has been insane for the last couple of weeks. So I'm sorry about that. It's something I like to do for you guys to help you out, but um, I'll I'll still try to do it in the next couple of days and, and get it to you um, in case it helps you get over any hurdles. Um, all right. So object relational mapping part three, uh, these database relationships. We uh, have already talked about um, relationships with uh, one-to-many. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about one-to-one -one and many-to-many. -many. Uh, Mohammed, do you have a question? I was just going to say, I think 11-13th is Monday, not Thursday in the previous slide. Yeah, that's probably because it's an artifact from the last time I taught this and I just didn't edit it completely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, go by the date, not by the day. <laughs> and I'll try to update that later before I uh, put the slides online for you guys. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so we're just going to focus on these two types of relationships, and we're going to make some changes to the art gallery project to implement these relationships between uh, different models and entities. Okay, so um, this project structure that I've been working on, um, we already have artwork, we have artists, those have been connected with many to one relationships. Um, and so we're gonna establish a one-to-one -one relationship between artwork and a new class called artwork details, which will also be an entity and have a table associated with it. And then we're gonna do a many-to-many -many relationship between artwork and style. We're gonna change the relationship. Right now we're allowing exactly one style for each artwork. And we're gonna say, well, what if we could categorize you know, more than one style for a piece of artwork? Then we would need to actually link them so that artworks have a list of styles, just like styles might have a list of artworks. And um, so this you know, here uh, represents that many to many relationship. Um, so that's what we're gonna work on. Let's talk first about the one-to-one -one relationship. Um, so in the Java application, some of the changes that you're gonna need to make are, for example, in the model for the primary class, and by primary class, I'm referring to artwork, um, we need to have a field that is something that is of the type of the other class. So we're, if we're going to move a bunch of our details out of artwork and put them in a separate artwork details um, entity, then uh, we have to connect them with, uh, you know, some sort of uh, field, and we're going to call it details. And then we'll add a one-to-one -one annotation, and then we're going to have this attribute cascade. This basically tells... Um, it tells the application that you need, anytime you save an artwork, it needs to automatically just send that information straight through to artwork details and save it in that table as well. So that you can just pass it all as one object and it's an object that is part of another object. And so it, um, when you don't have a primitive value, like a string or something that would just be saved, because remember, every single cell in the table has to hold a primitive, right? So if you have something like an object that is uh, details that has a bunch of fields of its own, you have to use cascade to tell it, just pass it right along. And then you don't have to set up a bunch of extra stuff. It's a pretty handy annotation um, or uh, attribute rather. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is if we add the annotation at valid, it's going to tell Spring, um, make sure you validate the objects that are in that class and not just the primitives. Cause there again, it's going to assume um, I mean, it's going to default to just validating primitives and you have to tell it, um, oh, hey, we've got a class here that you need to go and look at what the rules are in that model um, and validate on, on those fields as well. Um, so it's, you're passing it right through. Okay, so, um, and of course you have to make some changes to your constructor and your getters and setters when you do this, right? Um, so that's one thing that we're going to need to do is to set up an artwork details model, and then we're also going to need to modify our artwork model to use it. Uh, and then um, we're actually going to make some changes in our templates because 
we don't really need a controller with something that has a one-to-one -one relationship since we are going to cascade everything through the primary uh, object, which is the artwork. Um, so we're just going to uh, let that happen. And then over in the view, in the, in the template, uh, we're gonna need to make sure that the references are all updated so that they're actually references based on the details now, um, since those properties like, um, you know, descriptions and dimensions and things like that are not going to be uh, directly located inside artwork anymore. They're going to be in detail. So we're going to update those references. Okay, so let's go um, take care of this. Um, we're gonna, we got quite a work to a uh, little bit of work to do just to get that part done. Um, all right. So um, to do number one says create an art details class. We're going to move um, seven properties into details to get them out of here. And then we're going to move the getters and setters. We're going to refactor the constructor. And then we'll add our, our field details that's going to um, represent the object of the, the, uh, the artwork details um, class and then um, have all of that be updated as well. OK. So let's uh, let's see here. Um, we're going to come over to our models, and I'm going to create a new class. And we're going to call it Artwork Details. Okay, and um, all right, uh, it's going to extend Abstract Entity just like we've been doing for the other ones because uh, we want it to have that ID automatically. All right, and uh, let's see, we want to move over uh, media, year created, description. Um, so everything from here, let's see, down to here, um, the width, the height, the depth, and the image ID, all seven of these, we're just gonna take right out of here and go plop them down right here. And then we can create a, a constructor for this and we're going to need um, a empty constructor first, as usual, and then um, I can, you know, generate another constructor that will actually um, allow us to set all of these. Okay, um, and then we'll do the getters and setters. And actually, um, I can just copy those over. Um, let's go get them. Uh, everything from media through image ID, right? So come down here and go from here all the way down to here. Okay, I'm gonna just pull those out. There we go, and set them right in here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that all uh, should correspond just fine. And then uh, we're going to want to move, uh, this um, get dimensions um, instance method that we have, we wanna move that over as well because now the dimensions aren't uh, stored here anymore, right? They're stored within this artwork details object um, that's holding all of these details. Okay, so that will allow us to still access that if we need it. <laughs> and my cat is sitting in front of the in um, in front of my solution. So you gotta go, honey. Okay. <laughs> She just wants to be close by. Okay. Um, all right. So we have that. Um, and then uh, right here, we need to update this reference. We've done that. Um, because now, uh, well, we can't actually do this yet. We need to actually create um, this other part, right? So we want to create an artwork details object here. And now that it exists, we can say we want a private artwork details called details. That's gonna be our field. And um, we're not going to uh, want traditional getters and setters because, well, let's see, is that true? Yeah, actually we do. We need to have, uh, we need to have regular uh, getters and setters for this because that's uh, how, it's, how it's gonna get done. When we, when we have the cascading, that's how it's gonna get done. Okay. All right. Uh, but right here, we now that we have details, we can actually update this so that we can access the year created from details because 
now it's like one degree away, right? So we'll say um, details. And then we can't just say get your created because it's private, right? Um, in artwork details. So that's where we're going to use that getter instead and say uh, get your created. Okay. So now we've accessed that so we can keep our two string method um, with the same information that it had before. Uh, let me check my to do's here and see how we're doing. I can remove this. We do need to update. Let's see. Let me double check this. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? I think I'm in the wrong file. I'm in the wrong file. Yes, I'm not in the wrong file. All right, we're no longer going to be taking in all of these uh, just in order to set details because that's what we're doing in the details class. All we have to do now is say artwork details and put in details. And then we can set this dot details equals details. And again, um, this will happen when when it cascades. It'll just go ahead and take care of that for us. Okay. So that's done. Um, now we just have to update our references in our uh, index, um, our artworks index and our artworks add um, templates. So let's go over to here. We're going to update all references to the properties that are now part of artwork.details instead of just being part of artwork. Uh, so let's do a set, which I'm, I'm in the index. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. So everywhere that we have um, something that does not exist, we know, you know, ID definitely is still part of artwork. Title is part of artwork. So those are fine. Um, artist is part of artwork, but year created is not. So this is one where we're going to have to say, you know, details dot year created. And then um, right here, we're going to need to say artwork dot details dot image ID. Make sure I spell it right. Um, and that may be it for that one. Let me uh, make absolutely sure. I'm having a little trouble with this updating. Okay, yes, it's just those two. Um, everything else here is already, is still a part of art, artwork. Uh, so we should be good. But over in um, the form, the actual ad form, that's where we're gonna have uh, more things that we're gonna have to change because quite a lot of the things that we put into the form um, actually, uh, will now be saved into details instead of being saved into artwork. All right, so we're going to start at the top here and uh, take care of all these references. Okay, so the title is part of artworks, um, the artist is part of artworks, um, all of that, the name and everything we've got. So here we go, we've got a year created, so we're going to need to actually say artwork.details.year created and here as well. And then for media, we need to say artwork.details.media. Um, for width, we need it. And for height and for depth. depth. <laughs> and uh, for description, details.description. And then image ID, we need it here as well in both spots. Um, since we also have a little bit of uh, validation on here that requires uh, requires us to have an image ID. Uh, and then style is something uh, altogether different. So um, I think we've covered everything. Let's, uh, let me double check. I'm gonna get this out of here. Make sure I don't have any more to do number ones. Um, yeah, this is one that I already did. Okay, did I just, remove one that I shouldn't have removed. Hmm. All right, we're going to find out. So <laughs> let's go to, uh, let's get this up and running and see how it goes. Okay. Um, all right. Cannot determine recommended JDBC type for uh, artwork details. Okay, 
Um, that's going to probably be because, uh, and I don't have my, I don't have my um, workbench over here. Let's get this over here and take a look. Um, going to look and see. Um, so we have created something new, uh, but it's not reflected here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop these. Um, so it can just start over altogether because we've just changed the structure of our data and it doesn't know what to do. Um, so when this happens, you need to drop them and you're going to generally need to drop them in a very specific order uh, because of uh, the relationships between them. Um, it doesn't want me to drop style. Uh, I need to drop something else first. Okay, let's try dropping artwork because it refers to both style and um, artists. So we drop that first, we should be able to do these now, no problem. Because they do not uh, reference um, artworks. Okay. All right. So I've dropped my tables, but my schema is still there. So now let's try this again. Oh, it's still complaining about the same thing. Okay, you know what? I probably forgot to put my annotations in here, but uh, let's go double check. I probably forgot to make it an entity. And I did. Well, of course it couldn't create a table. I didn't make it an entity. All right. Um, I am going to run this again. All right. Still having the same error. So let me take a look here. See if there's anything else that I failed to do. Got all of that. All right, guys. Uh I'm gonna have to look into this. Okay, this is a good time for us to take a break. I was gonna take a break uh, at the end of this section anyway, before we get into the many to many, especially since we've already gone for a while with the presentation earlier. Um, we're about 45 minutes in. So let's take a break. And then um, when we come back, uh, I will uh, see if I've uh, figured out what I have done here. Cause I clearly just, I'm just leaving something off. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, Gold star for, I have to remember who did this, uh, Brittany, gold star for Brittany, uh, figured out, um, I kind of skipped right over the whole point of this thing, which is that we have to like specifically tell um, Hibernate that we want a one-to-one -one relationship with this thing, right? Otherwise it does not know how to connect it. So uh, it can't cascade because we didn't tell it to. And, and by we, I mean me. Um, so uh, I added the one-to-one -one annotation. Um, I added the attribute cascade and set it to cascade type dot all. And then I also added this um, validate so that when we fill out the form, all of the things that are defined over here um, as requiring, you know, like uh, the year created can't be blank. The image ID can't be blank. That will still take place um, because we're passing that down. So that worked. I got it up here. I went over and I added an artist. I added uh, a style. Um, and uh, then I went over and I added an artwork that used that artist and that style. Now, um, something that uh, is different from the last time you saw this application uh, in the video that you watched before um, is that we no longer have an enum for our styles. We actually have the ability to add styles at will, um, just like we have the ability to add artists. Um, so that's going to be something that, you know, we're building these up as we're doing it. Now, in a while, when we get this thing completely set um, and we're uh, with the styles, um, with the many-to-many -many relationship, uh, I'm going to drop the tables again, and then I'm going to actually just going to import a bunch of data so that you can see all of the artwork that I've been collecting from you guys um, and my students from my last cohort. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and go back to the slides and talk about many-to-many. So um, when you want to set this relationship, you just need to go into two different classes, right? You, um, you're going to go into the primary class artworks, and we're going to change the field so that it's no longer just a single style. Because right now, if we go to artwork um, and we look at uh, style, it's just a single style. We're saying there's a many-to-one relationship here. 
we want to change that so that we can have a list of styles. Um, and then we're going to add many to many uh, instead of many to one. Um, and we're going to uh, make sure it's not marked as final. We're not going to initialize it as anything. Uh, it'll get initialized for us. Um, but we will need to make some changes to the constructor and the getters and setters uh, to accommodate this. And then over in the style class, we're going to uh, do the opposite. We are going to create a list of artworks um, so that it can keep track of all of the artworks that have been um, marked as having that style. And then we'll add many to, many to that as well. And we're gonna map it uh, by the name of the property, which we're gonna call styles. Um, we'll say that it's mapped by styles so that it knows which of these properties to connect. Okay. Um, and that's how it's going to be able to create uh, that relationship in the tables. <laughs> Stop it. It's chewing on that. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, if there is no getter, you will, you know, we'll need to add one. Um, and that brings me to what happens in the database, right? The database is going to create something called a join table. Um, because we have set this many to many relationship and we have said that we want it to be mapped by, you know, the styles, uh, we're going to call it a join table. It's, um, it allows you to have multiple combinations of IDs. Um, and that way you can tie them together in a way that, uh, you know, one might have, you know, two over here. And then, um, you know, down here we have, you know, where the artworks ID for five has two different styles, just like here, the style ID one had two different artworks associated with it. So you can keep having all these different combinations. Um, and neither of them have co columns for the lists because we don't store lists. All we do is reference the ID of the particular thing that it is and just do it as many times as we need to to cover all of them that are in the list. Um, and usually a join table gets named and it just combines the two entities, entity one underscore entity two. So in this case, it's gonna call it the artwork underscore styles table because that's the two things that it's joining together. Um, and then over in the controller, we'll need to make some changes. Um, just in the artwork controller where we uh, pass the IDs um, from the, the styles so that it can actually provide a whole list of uh, styles to choose from. And um, as long as there's no errors and that parameter is present, um, then we'll be able to use that CRUD repository method find all by ID. So we can look anything up by ID um, and uh, we'll use model binding to, uh, to pass it down. So then you just, you save, you know, say, okay, here's, here's the ones I wanna save and um, you'll be able to save them all at once. It's gonna be very similar uh, to the way we do a delete. Um, like we delete the artworks and we collect the IDs and then pass them back through the controller. Um, and then there, there's going to be some changes that we're going to want to make uh, over in the view as well, because we need to update our, um, our, our view, our template to actually be able to display the whole list of styles. So um, there's a lot of different ways that you can handle it. It's going to kind of depend on what you want to do with it. So if you have like a form and you're going to let them select multiple options, you have to pass down the entire list. That's what we're going to do. Um, if you have some sort of a details page where you can uh, display a list of things, you would need to have a method to format that and display them the way that you want to. And then you can just call that method when you're ready to do it. And it'll um, you know provide the entire stringified uh, formatted, you know, information from the entire list. Um, and maybe you would want to like, you know, be able to filter somehow on something. Um, those are all things that we can do uh, with, with this relationship. And uh, if you are only allowing um, the user to add one object of the class at a time, then it's going to look different. And that's kind of the way that it's done in the um, coding events uh, example it's done a little differently. Yeah, you can have multiple tags, right? But you're gonna have to add them one at a time. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to actually be able to just choose from a list and um, choose as many as you want all at once. You need to get down. Oh my gosh, my cats, guys, they're driving me crazy. <laughs> they just wanna be part of it all. Okay, uh, thank you, because I couldn't see my monitor. All right, so um, let's go over and uh, 
do all this coding. We've got uh, a bit of coding to do here. Um, let's see, see how we do on time is going to determine how far I get, but let's see. Uh, let's go over to our um, artwork here. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is just use my to-dos because this is why I create the to-dos. So it's easy to find what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, let's start with the model. We're going to go and actually change this relationship um, so that we can have multiple lists. So we'll change this uh, to be um, a list of styles. And I'm just going to use list. Um, and that is not what I want. List. There we go. I want the... Uh, I want the interface from java.util. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to have a list of style objects, and then we're going to call it styles. Um, and we want it to be private. We definitely do not want it to be uh, final um, because it's going to need to just get overwritten um, sometimes. OK, uh, we need to update the constructor, the getter, and the setter. And we also need to change this to many to many. So let's do that. And then constructor, getter, and setter. Let's go up down here. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of, um, there we go. Instead of having a style style, we're going to have um, a list of style objects, styles that gets passed in. And we'll say this dot styles equals styles. So this way, um, it can just completely overwrite it every single time um, it needs to. Uh, and then um, for our setters, I'm just going to um, actually just going to recreate them. Let's just do this. Get her in setter for styles. Good. Okay. That's faster. Um, and then uh, we want to have, uh, you remember that I said that it would be nice for us to have a way to format the styles so that we can display them well on the page. Uh, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to write. Um, a method, and for the sake of time, because there's other things I'd rather spend my time on, I'm just going to paste it in. Um, you remember the string builder, right? Um, how we can build strings one bit at a time using the string builder class. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to set a string builder called style names. We're just going to go through as many styles as there are um, using styles.size, and we'll append um, the name from that style that's, that's saved um, in the style class. Uh, in that object. And then um, as long as it's not the very last one, we'll you know add a comma and a space, and then we'll have a really nice list um, that we'll display on our page later. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, let's come back to our to-dos here. Um, over in style, we need to do the reciprocal relationship, right? We set many to many in artworks. Now we need to set many to many in styles. So uh, we already have a list here. We need to take final off. Um, and we need to say that this is many to many. And then we need to map by styles um, instead. And this has given me grief. So let's see if I can fix it. Oh, I, I forgot my at symbol. Huh, that would help. There it is. OK. Um, and yes, and then we uh, change this to be styles since we updated the name of that over in the artworks, uh, the artwork class. Uh, so that is all we need to do there. That's actually pretty straightforward. And then um, we're going to have some things to do here uh, in the, I apparently lost some of my, yeah, here we go. All right, so we still have things left to do in the artwork controller to make sure the data gets passed down into the templates the way that we want. And we also have changes that we need to make in the actual templates themselves. So uh, we're going to go uh, over to the controller next. Let's go um, straight to here. OK, we're going to add a query parameter. We're going to call it uh, style IDs. And I'm going to get this set up so that I um, don't lose my mind. OK. So this is on, um, we hit what well, we, we jumped to this, but it, on the process uh, art form, which I am process add art form. There we go. 
I have a mistake in my, um, I'm sorry, I have a mistake in my solution. I'm gonna have to go back and fix it. Um, I saw it, saw it immediately that it was wrong. Okay, so we have uh, everything that we've had here uh, previously where we're actually just, um, you know, allowing it to accept this entire artwork, but we also are going to need to allow for um, a request parameter. And we're gonna put that right after errors here. Um, I'm gonna say request param, and uh, we're gonna say required equals false so that it's okay to not have anything checked. Um, and then we're going to have a list uh, of IDs and we need to use the, um, so I need to import list as well. Oh, where are you? Oh, come on. <laughs> Sometimes it does not give you the thing you actually need. List, list, where are you? Oh, for heaven's sake. All right. Let me do this. Let me back off. That's what I wanted right there. Oh, no, I lost it. Okay. <laughs> integer. We need the, um, the wrapper class integer here um, because that is what it deals in. Um, but the IDs, of course, will just be uh, primitives but it'll take care of it for us. It'll do that auto boxing thing we've talked about before. And then we'll call that um, style IDs. And then um, I need to fix this because I accidentally did away with it. There we go. Uh, and that is going to allow us to accept those style IDs as part of um, the form uh, processing when we submit the form to add the artwork. And so then if we have those style IDs passed in, we need to account for that. We need to look up the style objects that correspond to those IDs and then set them into that artwork object um, that has been passed in. So uh, we will add a little bit of uh, logic here. Right before we actually save the artwork, we're going to need to um, add things to it. So um, I'm going to say if, um, style IDs is not null. Um, then uh, we can create a list of style objects and call it uh, selected styles. And we're going to cast it um, to the style, cast it to that type. Um, and then we're going to go get the from the style repository, uh, which I have created um, to handle this, um, just like we have had uh, created repositories for other things, um, we will use that CRUD repository method find all by ID so that it can look um, for them. And we can just give it um, to them all, just like that. And then um, we can access artwork. <laughs> That's okay. We can ask, access the artwork object that was already created by Spring um, right here uh, it, it, of the artwork class when it collected all the data that was passed in. Um, we're going to add to it and use the setter to say set styles and give it those selected styles. So just to be clear what's happening here, um, we're we're not able to depend on it automatically grabbing those styles and cr and creating part of artwork like it does with all of those other uh, fields. Um, this is something we have to handle it separately because we have to actually go use the IDs to look up the style objects themselves. Those are not already part of the package. Um, so we're going th um, through and accepting those separately, that list. And then here um, we'll just say, if we do have style IDs in that list, uh, then we need to look them up we're going to go to the style repository and go get the actual objects. And then we'll be able to set those um, into the artwork um, that exists. And then we can access our CRUD um, repository method save on the artwork repository to save the entire object once those styles have been set into it. Does that make sense? OK, we'll take silence as a yes. OK. Um, so, uh, that will take care of that. Now we have the ability to save those styles when they are selected. Now we haven't updated our template yet to allow people to select multiple styles, but we're getting there. 
Uh, so um, that takes care of the last thing we need. That's really the only thing we needed to do in the controller there for this. So now let's go down into our templates and we're going to start with the add form and update this um, so that, uh, you know, we already pa are passing down the list of styles because we had them in a dropdown, right? We were able to just kind of go to a dropdown and select a single style. We're going to change it. We're going to replace the select with a series of checkboxes instead. So I'm going to come um, right in there and I'm going to grab. Give me just a second. I want to replace this whole thing. Okay. So I'm just going to replace um, this as, let me make sure I got this the way I expected to. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think it's going to have a, a, a header on it if I, if I do that. So I'm, I'm going to replace this um, here. And I'm using a TH block so that I can actually um, have it loop through with a TH each and go through each style in that list of styles that's being passed down. And then uh, it'll have a checkbox for each one. So this is pretty much the same thing we did on the delete form, right? Um, and it's just going to uh, use ID as the value, but it's gonna use the name as the text that displays on the page for the label. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Um, and then over in um, the details form, oh, we haven't done the details um, yet. Yeah, 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 we have the details page. Okay, so in the details page, um, which uh, I don't think, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this yet. Um, we have a details page, guys. Um, we can actually uh, reference this a little bit differently now because we want to have that string um, by calling get formatted styles. So if there's more than one style, we will actually be able to see all of it. And so, cat, okay, hold still. <laughs> all right, so all I have to do is go to um, artwork and I actually saved the get formatted styles as part of the artwork class. So I'm just gonna say get formatted styles and call it right here um, in the template. And that will allow us to get uh, the whole list that we want if we have more than one. Okay, um, so there's that. And then um, the last thing is not that. I am, oh, I see, it got, it collapsed, okay. The last thing is to go over to our index and actually add a column. Um, because we want to be able to view all of the artworks that have been filtered by that style, uh, which is a pretty uh, cool thing to do. So let's go over to the style section, um, which uh, you guys have only barely seen because this is new, uh, something new for this, this particular lecture. Um, and we're going to add this column right here. Okay. So I'm going to have, um, I've already got the ID and the name of the style. But, um, you know, right here, it's, oh, it looks like the link is already here. Um, so is there something new I need to do? I don't think so. I actually think this is already done. So I don't know if that, if that, if this to do is a mistake or what, but we've got it. Okay. So I think we're good, actually. So let's run this. All right, that's the case. I'll just have to update that and take that to do out. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to, um, I'm just gonna go back to the home here and we're gonna go over to our artist page and um, we have, uh, all of that is the same. Artworks is kind of where it's gonna get interesting. And um, we're gonna have some issues in just a second because we no longer have, um, like it's displaying this um, and we have a way to handle it, but our, uh, our our database can't handle it because we don't have that join table, right? So this is where, you know, I might try to do some things, it's going to have a problem. I'm gonna come over here uh, to the tables. Let me um, refresh this so they show up, yeah. 
So I'm, it, it's creating some things, but it's, it's going to be a mess in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, um, and I actually wanted to talk about this uh, on a slide. Yeah. Okay. So we have this new form. It allows us to choose multiple things if they exist. Um, what we really want to do is to, uh, we're going to in, import um, the CSV files. And I've got a link here so that you guys can get to them from the slide if you want to practice this um, with, uh, with all the artworks that are in that images folder that you guys have seen before. Um, we're going to load them in this order, but that means if we want to drop them, we're going to do them in reverse order. We're going to start with the join table, then do artwork and artwork details, then we'll do style and we'll do artist last. All right, so um, start with the join table, artwork styles. I'm going to uh, drop it. And yes, drop now. And then we'll do, um, what did I say? Artwork and then artwork details. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, because artwork is the one that references, has all those foreign keys, right? So if it's referencing all of those other ones, then we have to delete it first and then it won't be a problem. All right, so we'll delete our details. We'll drop style. And then we're gonna drop um, artist. Okay. Um, I just want to have a fresh start so that all the data is gonna correlate the way that we want it to. Uh, so I'm going to rerun the application so we can create it from scratch now. All right. And now instead of having partial data that wasn't quite right, we're going to be able to um, have fresh tables. And I'm going to go and I'm going to create them. So now I have to go in this order. I want to work uh, the opposite direction so that I'm adding the things that are the least dependent on other things existing first. So I'm going to go with artist and um, right click and go to the import wizard. I'm going to browse and I should already be where I want to be. Um, nope, I want class 18 data. Okay. Um, so we want artists and then next and we're going to import and we have 14 records. Okay, finish. Um, next on the list is style. We're going to do style. I'm going to import from styles.csv. And um, we have 16 records. Okay. Um, and then we'll do artwork details, which needs to exist before artworks can. So I'll import and do the details. And I have 36 records, which means when we do artwork, we should also have 36 records. If everything's correct. All right, artworks. Okay, and then um, the last one is uh, the actual um, join table that's going to join together the styles and the artworks. And I already have all this imported so that, um, or re ready to import so that, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and like use the form to put in 36 things, but I want you to be able to see them all. So we're going to import it instead. All right, artworks and styles is my CSV file for this. Okay. Thir 38 records. Okay. Uh, so clearly I haven't done a, a whole lot of the of the doubling up, but um, now we can go and we can look at these things. Um, I'm going to open them from scratch here. So uh, we can go to artwork and we see that artwork has um, an ID, a title, and an artist ID and a details ID. So this table is really clean now because we took all of those details out of it and we're just referencing a details object now. So then if we go over to the details table, we actually see all of those additional pieces of information, the ID, the, the you know, height and width and depth, uh, the media, the image ID, et cetera, uh, year created, that's all now in this details table. And then um, the artist, of course, um, we have first name, last name, and location. On the styles, we've got uh, a number of different styles here um, to choose from. And then uh, this join table looks exactly uh, what I showed you it would look like. All it does is say, I have an artworks ID that I want to correlate with a styles ID. 
And so it does that with as many things as it can. And you'll notice um, for style uh, three here, we actually have two different pieces of art. Um, and for style uh, 12, we have two different pieces of art. And uh, artwork number 38 actually has two different styles. Um, so there's some things we can uh, go look at here. Um, let's go to the list of artworks. And there they are. Now that our database has data, we see a great list of all of this artwork provided by you guys, which is awesome. Um, so let's go to 38, since that's one of the ones that we know uh, was marked as you know having two different styles. And we have an error. Awesome. So I have an issue with my details, uh, my link to the details page. Okay. And I have to figure out what that is. Um, oh, we, we still have a, I, I knew I missed something earlier, guys. It, <laughs> I knew I missed a, uh, a, a template. I accidentally deleted a to-do that I did not mean to. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't know where it was and this is where it is. So um, everywhere in the uh, artworks details page that we have these um, references, we need to update them to say dot details, just like we did on the other ones. Uh, oh, no, not ID. ID is, is actually part of artwork. Description, however, is something we moved to details as was media and dimensions. And I think, that's it. We did the image ID up here. Yeah, I think we're good now. Let me restart this. All right, we're going to go back to number 38 here. Oh, it's still not loaded. There it is. All right, let's try it again. All right. Here it is. Okay. So we have this uh, drawing and um, the style is marked as having both realism and pencil illustration. So you can see that our little formatting worked. It just uh, did a, a comma and space separation there. But we have some nice information, right? Um, if we go back to the list of artworks and choose, um, you know, let's get down to some of you guys. You guys are down at the bottom here. Let's see, we've got, um, uh, Sneha's got a, a, a picture here of a beautiful monarch butterfly. Awesome. And um, we have, Arena's got a um, painting of a dog. Sasha, very cute. And um, let's see, uh, just in time for Halloween, Melanie has a photograph of a creepy old doll, <laughs> which is very cool. Um, and who else do we have in here? Okay, um, Caesar has a couple things. Let's grab one of these. Yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Cool, okay. So um, I feel like there was one more. Who did I skip? Oh, Anthony, yeah, okay. If I can, yeah. So you have this cool, you know, modern, uh, modern piece. Okay, and if we go over to styles, um, now we can see that it's, got this link to allow us to view any artwork that's of that style. So I can actually uh, click on any of these and it'll give me a list. And let's look at the database again, because I don't remember what the IDs were, where we had um, multiple things in one style. Let's go to uh, 14, okay. Um, back to the list of styles. Uh, photography, okay. We have a number of things that just kind of got thrown underneath the category of street photography. Um, because it was already there. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, now we have a whole bunch and you can kind of see all of these. And notice I've also got links on these images. If I click on any of these, it's gonna take me to that details page. So there's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of the fact that this data is all connected and then you can make your templates um, easy to navigate where you can skip from one place to the other and get to, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to get to the same page. Um, just based on how you set up your templates and where you put links and things. Um, but we can see all this information about something um, very easily. Okay, so we are running out of time pretty quickly, but there was something else I wanted to cover. Um, and that was uh, to, let's see, I have some some more to-dos in here. Um, I wanted to show you how to, to sort um, using a comparator class. Um, 
you can actually have um, these classes that we're going to add a new class here and call it um, artist comparator. And it's going to allow us to say we want artists to be sorted on their last name. And it gives us a way to set up some, uh, you know, a specific type of sorting and then uh, provide that to the sorting function. Um, so I'm just going to copy this in because um, we're so short on time. So we're, we're going to import um, the comparator uh, uh, interface. It's actually an interface, so we're implementing it. Um, and we're going to say we want to have a comparator, comparator that uh, is specifically for our artist class. And so we're just going to have compare be something it's built in. We're going to override it. And then we're going to say, okay, we have two artists and we want to compare them, A1 and A2. I'm going to say, go get the last name and compare it to the last name of the ar other artist. It's going to use this and behind the scenes, it's going to just keep comparing them until it's got them sorted alphabetically by last name. That's what it does for us. It's, it's that simple. So now I can go over and actually um, in the artwork, uh, let's do the art, artist controller first. Um, over here in the artist uh, controller, I can uh, create a list uh, first like this. And say I want a list um, of artists, and I, that's that's going to be my um, where I'm going to go and actually get them all right. Um, and then here I'm going to sort them, and I'm going to pass in that comparator I created to so it knows how to sort them. Like what what uh, property do you want us to sort on? In this case, it's the last name, right? So by creating this class, this artist comparator class, we give it exactly what it needs to do that sort on that artist list. And then we can just pass those artists in um, instead of passing it in a blind like this, where it's probably just going to be in order of like ID or something. And then when we go over to our artist page, um, we'll notice, uh, let me get back to here. When we go back to our artist page now, um, we'll see that everything is now sorted in alphabetical order by last name. Okay. So we could do the same thing, um, and I'm going to actually copy this um, over into our artworks because we pass the artists down um, elsewhere too. Um, in our, our our artworks add needs it right because um, we want them to be able to choose from the artists on the add form when we're setting up an artwork. So in the artwork controller, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add it right here, and then um, we can change this here to just be that list of artists, just like we did before. And then we can do the same thing for styles. So let's uh, create a style comparator uh, the same way. We'll do it real fast. Yep, okay. And um, this time I'm gonna say, I just wanna, I wanna uh, sort the style on its name property. So we'll have um, have it go and uh, just compare the names. And then over in the controller, we can do the same thing here uh, where, but instead of an artist, it's going to be styles. So we'll say we want a list of style objects called styles. We're gonna cast it to um, be a list of styles. And we'll go to the style repository and say, find all. And then we'll sort it, styles.sort on the style comparator instead. And then down here, we'll just pass in styles. OK, and now it's sorted. Um, let's copy this, and we'll go over to our style. Um, our last one is to do this for the style page as well. And then we'll go look at it. Um, we'll, we'll get it up and running and go look at it. OK, so here, I'm just going to say I want styles. Okay, let's re restart. And then um, I, I went too soon. It wasn't quite ready. Okay, so we know our styles are, are sorted now by last name. Now we go over to the styles page and instead of them being styled by, or sorted by ID, they're sorted by name, which is much more useful, right? 
to be able to actually see it in terms of a name because you can kind of quickly check and say, hey, have I added that one yet? Because we don't have any logic right now to prevent it from adding one that already exists. Um, that's something that you could maybe add later. And then over on the um, artists, when we say we, not artist, artworks, <laughs> when we say we want to add artworks, we can come here and see now that all of the artists are sorted by last name, all of the styles have been sorted by last name, um, a lot more useful. Uh, and that is, I think, the last thing that I want to talk about. Are there any questions on any of the things I have been madly talking about? Gabe. Um, I'm just curious. So whenever you, you like see a table on a web page, generally you'll be able to like sort by different columns in the table. Is that yeah. utilizing comparators? Like how would that look here? Exactly. Yeah. You would just have additional ones and you'd have to um, make sure that the links you'd have to have um, you'd have to have some uh, methods to handle it so that um, you would know which one to use. Um, basically, you know, which which one of them am I going to pass in if I want to sort by first name or if I want to sort by last name or by location. Um, and then you could give it a different comparator um, to sort by. Gotcha. Is that is that done like with Java or because usually that's not like reloading the page or anything? So yeah, so that's where your your controllers come in because you're essentially um you're gonna be requesting a refresh of the page. Um it's oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. Your graded assignment actually um has some of that built in. Um uh -huh. I think. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to look at that and get back to you. But um, I think that they like did a lot of the logic for you so that you wouldn't have to do it. Um, uh, huh. But if I'm not, I, I might be wrong. Um, and, and they also may have changed it uh, possibly from the way it used to be. I'll have to take a look because honestly, I just haven't even had time to look at it yet. Um, <laughs> I really do want to do an intro video for you guys, but I have to have three minutes um, where I'm not running from one thing to the next. Uh, yeah, it's a great question, but that would be a very common thing to do. And yeah, you would just put the functionality in behind the scenes so that um, you, when you click on it, it, it creates that request. And then it's going to uh, reload the page just because you've made a request to mm -hmm. change it. Mm -hmm. And it runs, the, the controller will handle it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, it would essentially be a, a parameter, you know, like a, a request param. Um, Melanie, you got a question? So um, this is a little bit off topic. Um, I have been having issues and I know um, a few other people have too with like the um, uh, the paths, I guess, in the controllers where mm -hmm. like it, if it doesn't have that backslash, it doesn't work or whatever. And it, like our code is exactly the same. Can you explain why that's happening? Do you? Um <laughs> Yeah, this, this frustrated me as a student too. I, I remember working on my my the fourth graded assignment and I was I was at a coffee shop. It was at Mocha Bees back when Mocha Bees was cool before the pandemic. And I used to, sorry, um, but it's true. Um, and I um, was like banging my head against and my, my friend Jason, we were studying together and he's just like, what? <laughs> I was like, ah. So yes, I get it. Um, but um, yeah, how you set it up, for the controller, like what you're gi giving as the base route of the route, the base mm -hmm. path, and how you set that up to then um, specify here to add on to that, um, the slashes only matter in that they have to be somewhere. I mean, although it'll work in some circumstances when it's not there, but I have found that if I'm consistent with putting a slash in front of things, um, that it tends to you know work every time. Um, rather than like putting them in some places and leaving them off on others. Okay. So are you talking about the actual routes here with the mapping or are you talking yes. about the, the path to get to the template? No, I think it's the get mapping. Yeah. So just try, just try, uh, just double check that you um, are starting with this and then you're able to add on to that, you know, directly just by providing a slash here and it okay. should work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think, you know, when you're new at this, the, one of the trickiest things is just remembering that this has nothing to do with the path in the browser. This has to do with the path that goes to the templates folder. 
and right. just you know, which one's which and you know it takes a while to get used to all that yeah yeah thank you mm -hmm. yeah any more questions Uh, I actually have a follow up on that one. I, I haven't really internalized when you would do redirect versus just write yeah. directly the name. Can you go over that real quick? Yeah. So um, in this case, we have a post mapping. You're actually um, submitting a form, right? And if you want to send it, you don't want to send it back to the form. You want to send it back to a different route altogether. And in this case, I want to send it back to the list of styles that's on the, you know, the, the display styles page. Um, so in that case, I'm going to say, all right, um, just redirect it to this route. And as soon as it sees that slash styles, it looks for the get um, controller uh, handler that corresponds to that. And of course, because I haven't specified anything, that means it's defaulting to this. Um, so it's going to immediately say, oh, I need to go run this one over here. And then it's going to run this. And that's what it'll actually uh, send to the browser. Why couldn't I just write styles? Why? What's the? Why do I need to say redirect? Because in this case, this has nothing to do with the template. It has to do with um, you're actually saying I want to redirect to the the uh, route um, that is controlled by here by these like you know slash add here. Um, it has to do with this route. It has nothing to do with a template. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think I get it. Yeah. Um, cause everything else, when you're returning, you're returning a string and it says, and you know, style, data, but this has to do with the fact that in the templates folder, I have a directory called styles and a template called add.html. That's what that's referring to. But when you mm. read this has nothing to do with a template, it has to do with the routing. So okay. you bring it to here. So if I want to make sure that the controller actions happen i want to do redirect um yes yeah okay. redirect will send it to a different uh handler and not to a template got it okay thank yep. you yeah, absolutely okay uh you mean uh, i was wondering if you have any advice about how to troubleshoot errors doing this kind of stuff i've been finding it really difficult that like in the exercises we have to do so much coding before even getting to the point where it's runnable and then yeah. I have like a huge amount of code and I don't know where to look yeah. for problems and I'm also just not sure what to do with the like the giant error messages it gives that go on for like what looks <laughs> like hundreds of lines is there like a place that it's helpful to look in those um yeah uh typically you want to trace down uh find like it sometimes they'll list like this file was doing this and then over in this file, this happened. And then over in this file, this happened. And you wanna trace it down till you finally find the file that belongs to you that you wrote where it initially triggered something that went wrong. And uh, then look for the line numbers, right? Um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually put console, uh, you know, print to the console in here using standard dot, you know, out dot or system dot out dot print line. Uh, and how and look for those messages in here, and you could put as many line breaks or whatever to make them stand out, um, and help you narrow down. And then you can also use the debug debugging feature in IntelliJ. Set some breakpoints in certain places until you can narrow down um, exactly where it's getting stuck. Um, if you're having, if you can't figure it out, you know, by looking by reading the error messages. Um, and then as far as like, if you don't even know what the error message itself means. Google is your friend, literally copy and paste the error, put it in Google. Someone somewhere is going to have run into that error and eventually you'll find something that's similar to what you're doing and they'll give you a clue as to what might be going on. Thank you. Yeah. And then if all else fails, if you've done all of that and you're still banging your head against the wall, jump into some office hours with a TA and, and, and let them help you. Second set of eyes. Um, I mean, if it's just your exercises, you can do that with your peers. But, um, and you, you know, you can ask about it on, on Slack, but if it's your graded assignment, that's where you're going to have to have a TA look at it. Um, okay. Any other questions? There was one other thing I wanted to mention, um, but I'll, I want to make sure that you guys have your questions answered too. Uh, let's see over in, um, the, <laughs> is it the artwork? Uh, no, it's abstract entity. Okay. Um, because I, uh, was out uh, sick the last two classes and you guys uh, were watching my older videos. I wasn't able to really address this, 
But uh, I did eventually, last time I taught this, figure out how to fix that problem I was having where it was jumping from like one to 51 to 101 every time I stopped and restarted my application um, when it was assigning the ID numbers in the database. You'll notice now I have nice sequential you know, numbers. This is what will fix that. Um, in your abstract entity where you have the ID, um, make sure you put uh, on the at generated value, put this strategy um, attribute and make sure it's generation type dot identity. And that will clear that up if it will fix it in case your, uh, your SQL database is being weird about it. So just a little note on that, um, it'll help you. Um, not required, but helpful to, to be able to get those sequential numbers um, guaranteed. All right, uh, let's go into uh, what's next. Okay, so on uh, Monday, we're gonna talk about authentication, which is where you can set up like a user um, and actually uh, authenticate them with their you know, uh, username and password and things like that. Um, and we're also going to talk about REST. What is REST? Um, we'll talk about APIs, um, how to actually work with external data that you can pull into your application, how to uh, create um, your uh, own Spring application to serve as an API. And I'll be able to give you some examples of that um, on this project, on this, and we'll have, you know, up until now we've said that this artwork gallery is kind of like a portal for the back end, right? It's like for managing your data. Um, and that's true. So what would happen if you wanted to have like a React front end or something like that, or Angular or whatever, um, you would need to be able to reach out to that backend application, that Spring application to get the data for the other one. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to do that to set up your, um, your uh, Spring app to serve information to another application altogether. Um, and then you'll have a catch-up class on the 13th in case you need a little bit of help right at the end of your graded assignment to get it in on time. But I highly recommend that you push and get it done as early as possible for your sake, for your TA's sake, for Colin's sake, because he has to get you approved to go to the next unit and it's a drop deadline. Um, so um, that's that. Uh, tonight for studio, you don't actually have a studio assignment. You're just gonna work on your graded assignment. So if you are, are done with um, part three um, or tasks one through three, yeah, um, you can go to the fourth one now um, and you should be set to go with your many-to-many -many relationship.